Hello, and welcome to Whiskey and Wool. My name is Shannon. Today, this is not going to be a normal update episode. Instead, I'm going to concentrate on a little spinning adventure that I have gone on over the past week. Um, I, if you are a uh, regular viewer and you watched last week, episode 81, you'll know what this is about. Um, this will be familiar. But if you're not, I'm gonna just start as if, if this is the, your first time finding me. Uh, just know that this is not a regular episode. It won't be an update where I talk about my knitting and my spinning. Instead, I'm gonna concentrate on one spinning project. And it is going to be this one right here. Um, I am spinning yarn to, with a deliberate attempt to create a color shifting, color transitioning, skein of yarn to knit the spark cardigan. The spark cardigan calls for spin cycle dream state. I um, purchased a couple weeks ago this beautiful Cormo from Wing and a Prayer Farm and I was thinking about like this is such a neutral color I could really go any which way with my contrasts um, and I started to think about what I would like with this. So I talked all about this in episode 81, um, and I landed on this idea that I would spin my own yarn. But I really love the effect of color transitioning in the Spark Cardigan. It's beautiful. I'll have put a picture on by now so that you know what I'm talking about. Um, this Cardigan by Andrea Mowry. So, I mean, these just look amazing together. Um, and this is my own hand spun. So I, what I'm going to do is take you through the process of me making the hand spun. I documented every step of the way and I'm gonna share that with you in this little mini episode in episode 81 and a half, if you will. Um, some quick information about the skein. It is a three ply. So I have realized, um, I realized a while ago couple months ago that Dream State Yarn, which I don't have any handy, but Dream State Yarn by Spin Cycle is a three ply. And so I started to experiment somewhat with this idea of making a color transitioning yarn. Um, color transitioning happens in hand spun gen like in a more subtle way without, by virtue of the spinner doing absolutely nothing. Um, if they're working with a, you know, a colorful braid that has sections of color dyed in it, you're going to get some color transitioning. I was looking to, aiming to uh, make, create color transitions deliberately. So I'm going to take you through the process of how I actually came up with um, this uh, yarn. And then at the end, when you're done seeing how I made it, I'm going to show you this caked up because if you know of Spin Cycle yarn, take a moment to grab some uh, Spin Cycle yarn. So um, the spin cycle dream state, if you see if you see it in the cake, that's when you really know that you've got some color transitions happening. So this color is shades of earth, and you can see that there's a navy blue with red, and and it transitions to like a golden blue, and then to a rusty gold, and then to a rusty purple blue, and then back to um, the navy blue again. So this, this skein has been used a tiny bit, uh, so I have used up some of it. I used it in the throwover uh, sweater by Andrea Mowry. And this is another one, some more subtle color transitioning dream state. This one is Deep Bump. There we go. Um, yeah, so the idea was, the goal was to make something similar. And I realized that actually this color is very similar. It turned out to be very similar to the Colorway Family Jewels by Spin Cycle. Um, yeah, so anyway, without going on, nattering on anymore, I'm going to take you to past me who was working on making this skein. And I will see you at the end with this caked up so we can see, did I get dream state like color transitions. I sure hope so. See you later. Okay, I am going to start um, dividing these two braids, these two BFL braids from Into the World, um, to make two skeins. They're each four ounces, so it'll be two skeins of three ply for my spark cardigan. I'm going to start by 
uh, unbraiding them, of course, but also just by dividing it um, by color and then seeing how I want to combine the colors. Um, I suspect that this deep turquoise blue will be one color and then um, of course the reds and orange being another, but I think this green could be a good transition between the blue and the warm tones, the warmer tones. Um. Okay, so what we have here is, uh, this is one braid. I've unbraided the braids. This is the other braid here, the second braid. So you can see this second braid has lots of the turquoise and blue, which I love. And then the other, and with interspersed with smaller bits that are orange and red, and then there's some dark blue in there as well. The other uh, braid has is more of a mix. It's got um, red and gold and green, as well as bits that are turquoise and blue. But I thought what was really interesting was this piece right here. Um, this is sort of a very interesting stripe pattern, which I think I can manage to duplicate. So I just have to think about how... So first what I'm going to do is um, break up the, the braids by color and then I'm going to see what I have. Okay, so here's my transition pile. Here's just blue and turquoise. Of course, there's going to be some amount of bleeding of colors. Um, so I do have some red in here. And there's, this is mostly turquoise. There's a little dab of red and green. And then this is my uh, red, orange, brown with some blue, which I'm probably going to end up pulling off and, and moving over into the blue pile. But I think I can get a pretty good idea. I think just from doing that separating, I have a pretty good idea of how this is going to lay out. Um, so I'm going to mess around with this and then come back on with you and show you. Okay, so this is one possibility. I'm not sure if this is what I'm going to actually do. Um, the, what you're looking at is rows of strands. So this, this I put there, it turns out there's a lot of white or what will end up being very like almost white light blue in some of the pieces. So I separated those out and um, I think I'll make one bob in those pieces. So what will happen is that a lot of it will just be white but there will be moment, moments in it that are quite dark as well. And I think I think that might be a really interesting look. Um, because what will that mean is that as it matches up with these other bits that are quite blue, um, there'll be some very intense blue sections punctuated with, um, these brighter either gold green or orange red or red, you know, brown, red brown bits, um, so this would be one strand or one bobbin. This would be the third bobbin over here. I have to play around with it because um, I do want to break up the bobbins in like so this this might be one repeat. These are each one repeat. Well, this is just one long consistent repeat. Um, but what I'll do is break them up so that I get at least two re repeats, maybe even three repeats in the on the bobbin. Um, yeah, and actually, because I'm doing two strands, two, two skeins, I probably want to do four repeats of each. Um, this, of course, is easier because it's just one long bobbin. So I could 
spin this in one just one bobbin and then use half of it for one skein and the other half for the other whereas these two two bobbins I'm going to want to break up a little bit more. I hope you followed that. I I hope it made sense. But I think Okay, so I um, separated and rolled up into little tiny strips um, by color. So now they're lined up this way, but they're going to be spun this way. So what I've done is created a repeat. So I started with the blue to the green to the yellow to the orange to the red brown and then back to red blue here. And then that would then repeat back to the beginning. So that would then go into that. Now what I'll do is um, start weighing the, I have a scale, so I'll, I'll start weighing up. I also had that tail that I originally showed you in the beginning. I have um, some strips of that and I don't know what to do with them because they kind of transition across um, strips. So I'm probably just going to put them wherever uh, the blue green to yellow sections are light and then they'll just be they'll just be in there somehow I don't know but yeah so now I'll start uh, piecing everything out weighing it up I'm trying to get prepared to make four bobbins of 40 grams each with um, repeating as frequently as possible in those stretches but uh, also as evenly as possible in terms of grams so that I um, so that the colors line up pretty much, kind, you know, mostly the lineup. The um, the all blue I have pulled aside. So this is already, um, it's 80 grams worth. So it's already got the 80 grams in it. And so that is put aside. And I will um, strip this down, um, bef you know, at some point before I start spinning it. So that's what's happening. Okay, I have made eight little bags of the gradient. Um, this way I can keep them all close and good. What I'm going to do is write the grams on each bag. I'm going to weigh them and write the grams on each bag. And then I'm going to combine two bags to make one bobbin. So I have eight bags. That would mean I'll have four bobbins. The solid, well the kind of the turquoise, the one that's the one bobbin that's all turquoise will split across two finished skeins so that will give me a total of six bobbins worth of yarn I hope this works <laughs> I hope I love this I think I will I really liked the way the gradients laid out um, which I'll have put a picture in uh, ahead of this because I didn't I didn't record that part yay all right I'll check in later when I've got the skein on the way Hey, I just wanted to check in and show you, give you an update on how far I've gotten on this spinning project. Um, I have now got one bobbin that is 80 grams and all of the turquoise blues. So you can see I'm getting a really nice gradient. One thing I noticed as I was spinning is that the white sections really have a pretty strong, you could probably see mostly it right here. They have a pretty strong turquoise cast to them. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, I, I am uncertain. It's all an experiment of how it's going to ply with the other colors. I have, and this, by the way, 80 grams really pushed these little bobbins to their limit. Um, this little bobbin is meant to hold about 50 to 70 grams. So 80, I don't think I could have put more than another couple. This is about 81 grams. So there is that. And then I did, I've got one bobbin finished for uh, one of the three plies. And you can see that, I think you can pretty much see on here that I'm getting a pretty nice um, gradient. So what you're actually seeing here is uh, underneath this, the um, spin went this way. And then I came back this way with the blues. So underneath these blues is a nice green, um, <laughs> gradient that leads into this so it's going the I have a picture actually so the fleece is going from this sort of purpley red blue into turquoise 
into green, into yellow, into orange, into red. And then there's a dark um, brown, which is making the red really pretty dark. And then it starts over again. So that dark red brown goes into this dark blue, um, dark reddish blue. So it's really, it's really nice. It makes a very pretty sort of um, what I would characterize as a rainbow, but a fall-like rainbow. Yeah, it should be pretty nice. I'm really curious how these are going to ply and how having this gradient blue go through the whole entire skein as one of the plies, what's gonna happen um, to the colors. It'll be really interesting. We'll get a very consistent blue going all the way through. Um, but yeah, it should be pretty nice. One of the things that I've realized, so this is the, I'm working on my second bobbin right now to finish off um, one of the uh, three plies. But one of the things that I've realized is that a lot of the sections of fleece have, um, uh, cho are chopped up color, so I really want to spin the red and the yellow separately. Um, so what I find I'm doing is I'm either, so like a, a piece of fleece like this, when, I, when I'm in a red section, I'm pulling this piece out and um, drafting until all the red is used up. Uh, and then I'm putting it down and then I'll use, I'll draft through the yellow and then I'll put it down and save the green for the green section. So I find that I'm doing a lot more management of the fleece, um, even beyond just separating in general color area, just to get a really nice, fine, consistent um, rainbow on the bobbin. So it's been really fun and interesting. Oh, the other thing I can tell you, the BFL fleece, I've never spun 100% BFL before. And what I have found is that it's really sticky. It really likes to stick to itself. So I'm, I'm, I find that um, pre-drafting is really helping me go a little faster. Otherwise my right hand, which I'm using to draft, is getting tired uh, faster because I, I seem to, it seems to be needing a little more pressure to pull it apart. Anyway, just wanted to give you a quick update. I will check in again once I have some uh, plying happening. Okay, I have all three bobbins ready. Um, so these two, just to recap, these two are 40 grams and this one's 80. So I'll use about half of this. Uh, and these are making, you know, pretty nice rainbow. This is the second one I did. It looks like it's got less fleece on it, but it, I actually think it's just more tightly packed, but we'll see. I mean, they may not exactly match up, um, but I will, I'm gonna show you my, um, spinning process right now. I'll just show you my spinning setup and maybe a little bit of spinning, a little bit of plying if I can show you. Um, this is a Lazy Kate and these bobbins will slide on to the Lazy Kate um, and I'll do the plying from there. This is a, if you're wondering, this is a Chromsky Lazy Kate. It came with my spinning wheel. I bought my spinning wheel used and um, I believe this is a add-on that you can get when you buy, um, well, you can buy it separate, if you, even if you don't have a Kromsky um, spinning wheel. There are the bobbins on the Lazy Kate. Um, there is a tension wire or thread, really, so like a cotton thread that comes around to this. I realized that this is quite right, and I ended up gluing it in place, and really this should be, it should have been more upright, like more, at an angle like this um, for me to access it more easily because it's kind of right on the floor. But anyway, this creates the tension. So by turning this, it's a turnkey. By turning this, I can create more tension on the cord, which will keep these um, these bobbins from rolling backwards. So yeah, anyway, you can see it fits really nicely. I can't do three jumbo bobbins, but I can do one jumbo with two regular size bobbins on it. I could probably actually put a jumbo on this side. Um, if I wanted, uh, but I generally use my um, jumbo bobbins for plying. So this is gonna be the one that I'm gonna ply this uh, 120 grams of fleece on um, to make the ply. So we'll see, I'm so excited to see what's gonna happen when these get combined and what sort of uh, pretty cool gradient I end up getting um, in the end. Okay, here you go. There are my, there's my Lazy Kate sitting on the, on the floor. I just have a little bag of extra bobbins and some um, oil and stuff uh, handy. 
and then I I end up spinning right here at the end of my couch. Um, I have some extra pillows for back support. And uh, yeah, here's the spinning wheel all set up. I've got the jumbo flyer set up on it. Um, and the lead yarn is uh, through the, um, I don't know what that's called. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, I know this whole thing is called the mother of all. Um, but anyway, the jumbo bobbin flyer with the jumbo bobbin is set up on it. Um, and my, yeah, my little hooks are all ready to go and yeah. And I will um, show you how it all gets done. So let me just step back a bit. Just ignore my my computers. My home office is at the other end of the couch. <laughs> okay, so you can see I have started the three ply. Um, and yeah, here it is. Here it is coming off of the Lacey Kate. And I have this, um, see, yeah, hopefully you can see that. I am working with this red section. So it starts out with this sort of dark red, blue um, section. And then the turquoise is, as we saw before, a gradient. So let's see what happens. start I'm already my two uh, rusted rainbows are already mismatched so I'm on the green section of the center bobbin but I'm still on the blue section of the first bobbin um, the, the bobbin closest to the bottom of the screen so I was really hoping the greens and golds would match up pretty well um, so maybe when I get to the second section where I have green and gold again, maybe they'll be closer matches. Um, both of these, as I was doing the single plies, wait, I'm gonna show you the bobbin because it is really pretty. I'm still getting a really nice gradient even though the rainbows are mismatched. Um, but what I was gonna say is that both of those um, bobbins had significant amounts of red in them, which is fine. I'm, I'm red. I'm going, I'm going to have a very turquoise heavy skein, which is perfect because I love that color. On the first bobbin, the front, the lowest bobbin, I am on the green section and it will move into yellow. Um, so you can see, hopefully, green is coming up, up off the bobbin. And then when I use up all the green, it'll, it'll shift over to yellow and then finally over to orange. But on the middle bobbin, I'm already in the orange section and it is going to move into a red section and then it'll go back to blue. You can see the blue peeking out underneath right there. So let me show you what's happening on the, on the bobbin. It's really pretty. Um, look at that. Look at that. Right. Oops. Right there. It's so beautiful. It's so interesting. It's not at all what I thought I would get. Um, but I'm getting a really nice shifting of color, which is the goal. So you can see I am coming up to um, the dark blue, which is the transition between the rainbow sections. And uh, as soon as that dark blue is done, I'm gonna move into the turquoise blue and then green, yellow, and all that jazz. Um, whereas on the other bobbin, I am still in the red section, which uh, indicates it's the tail end of the first rainbow section. So it looks like I'm going to have another mismatch in the second section too, unless there's some surprises somewhere in here, like maybe this blue section's shorter than this one or something. So I don't know, we'll see. Uh, I'll show you what's happening on the bobbin. So there you go, this is what's going on. I am not <laughs> that in love with this section here. Um, I do wish it matched up better. But overall, I think, I mean, I'm getting a color shift. Um, I'm in this really deep, dark indigo section here, which is really pretty. And under this, there's a really nice gradient. 
that's happening, which I'll show you later when I scan this okay. up. Okay, so um, there were a couple steps in there that I didn't show uh, at the end there. When I was finished with the bobbin, I uh, wind it off onto the Nitty Knotty, which is a device you can easily find at any spinning supply store. And then from there, I tie it up and soak it for at least an hour in hot water. Hot water um, sets the spin, keeps the skein from unraveling. It releases a little dye, but not that much. Uh, <laughs> I've never ever ex experienced a huge amount of dye loss by using hot water. You just have to be cautious with hot water. Um, if you have a type of wool that is prone to felting, so you just don't want to agitate. So it takes to felt, you need soap, um, hot water, and agitation. So yeah, just don't agitate and you're okay. So anyway, soaked it, let it dry, and then I was able to put it into skein format for you. And you might have noticed in the clips that I showed you that I was becoming a little disappointed <laughs> in how it was going to turn out. I was really worried that it, what it what seemed to be happening as I was spinning was that not only was I getting a consistent strand of turquoise throughout, but one of the other two skeins was almost always red. So I was like, I'm just going to get this very long red and turquoise yarn, um, which is pretty, but not what I was going for. Uh, but the truth is in the winding, the caking of the yarn. So let me show you. This is what I got. So I am getting a gradient. Wants to focus on the mess on my bed instead of <laughs> in close. There we go. So I am getting a gradient. It's more subtle than I anticipated because I anticipated in the rainbow the um, a strand of yellow and yellow to match with turquoise, a strand of red and red to match, two red strands matching with turquoise, two green strands, ma strands matching with turquoise, etc., etc., all the way through. And I didn't get that. Instead, I got uh, a, a, some subtle shade of red, different shade of red transitioning along through the whole thing. Um, but it's pretty, and it is, I, you know, it does um, as much as um, many of the spin cycle yarns do if that's the standard <laughs> to which uh, this should be compared. Um, so it, 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 you know, it's, it's going to be a subtle transition, but there will be a transition. So that is what I think is important for this particular sweater design is that there is a transition. Uh, I have a second skein to spin, and uh, I will probably have it done by my next full episode. So I will show you that second skein spun and caked um, but at least now you've seen the process, you know what I've gone through. Oh, and um, finished um, details of this, this ended up being 111 grams and um, almost like 270 yards. Uh, I'll put the exact one on screen because I don't remember exactly, but uh, which is fine. That means my next bobbin will, or my next skein will be probably a little bigger, more like 130 grams. There will be some waste. There's always a little bit of waste, um, but... I'll probably end up with a two, uh, as I said, 130 grams and probably more than 300 yards. I think the pattern calls for around 600 yards of the contrast color. So all should work out just fine. And again, um, also by my next episode, I'll have done some swatching with um, my hand spun to make sure I'm getting gauge and that it's working. But I think these are going to be so pretty together. I'm super excited. Oh, so nice. Okay, I will see you next time. I'll see you in a week or so with my next episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing a little bit behind the scenes of my spinning process. This was much more than I ever could have showed you on a regular episode. So I uh, will see you again soon. Take care, bye.